Hey guys, what's up? Uh, welcome to a new video series where we're going to talk about stochastic dynamic programming in economics or dynamic programming under uncertainty. Um, the best way to go and talk about these problems, I guess, you know, as you've seen from my other series, is to first introduce a cake eating problem. So in this video, we're going to talk about a stochastic cake eating problem. Let's go. So in terms of setting up the problem, suppose we have a consumer who bought a cake to work and stored it in the office fridge and is deciding how to consume or save that cake over time. This is a infinite horizon, you know, there's no retirement. He's just going and deciding how he's gonna eat that cake uh, over this uh, infinite time frame uh, in discrete time. Now, this is a social office for, you know, lack of a, you know, sort of nicer word that captures the nuance of that's going on here. So it's possible that someone will either steal a piece of cake from our consumer or someone will bring in some more cake to go and share that with our consumer. Um, our consumer can't really tell the future with the regards to this, but he knows that this does happen. In the same feel of the original cake eating problem, uh, let's go and write our problem mathematically as the following, which is maximizing this lifetime utility where our choice variable is uh, cake in the next period and that's gonna be the expectation of this uh, series of uh, you know, lifetime utility, discounted lifetime utility based on information at time zero, subject to uh, theta t k t, right? Which is theta, right? Which we'll go and say before, which is our shock term, uh, times k t, which is our initial cake size. That's gonna be divided up into the cake saved later plus the cake consumed now. And our instantaneous preferences are going to be denoted by uh, this ln ct, right? Which is, you know, a natural log of consumption at time t, where uh, this natural log of theta t, right? This shock term, right? It follows a normal uh, or standard normal uh, process, IID process. Um, so, you know, the shocks that are issued at one point in time are completely independent of some other shocks later on. So in terms of solving this problem, we're just going to use a guess and verify method. Uh, so the steps are as follows. We're going to set up a Bellman equation. We're going to take a guess for what our value function really is. We're going to take our first order condition and solve for kt plus one. Uh, we're going to then set our initial guess equal to our Bellman equation evaluated at its maximum of kt plus one tilde, this is, you know, our uh, cake saving uh, identity, right? We're going to identify the coefficients from our guess in order to go and get a real policy function kt plus one. Note that our Bellman will be carrying around two terms instead of one, right? We're going to be carrying around a kt, right? Which is, you know, the cake size at a specific period and the shock uh, at that period. Now, our consumer is not in control of that shock, but it's still something that we're going to have to go and carry around with us because that's what goes and affects the value directly. So step number one, let's set up our Bellman equation. So from our problem, we're going to go and have this one over here, which is, you know, maximizing our consumption now, right? Which is maximizing uh, theta kt minus kt plus one plus beta, right? Which is this discount factor. Uh, times the expectation of this value function conditional on kt and theta t. Step number two is we're gonna take a guess for what this value function is and then we're gonna sum it into our Bellman. So in this context, we're just gonna use this uh, log sort of function, which is gonna be ct plus ct2 ln kt plus c3 ln theta t. Using this for uh, V kt plus one, theta kt plus one, and summing it into our Bellman, we go and we get the following, uh, which is you know a nice result, which we will see later. Taking the first order condition, um, this is just some math. I'm not gonna really go speak it out, but we go and we get a result that's very similar to uh, what we did in our um, just regular cake eating problem without these shocks. Uh, and we just have, uh, you know, B, C2, theta, T, K, T, all over one plus beta, C2. So the only thing new here is this shock term that's just being dragged along uh, with, with this, uh, you know, cake term, right? KT. Um, 
step number four here, we're going to go and set our initial guess equal to our Bellman equation evaluated at kt plus one. So uh, this is a mess. So we're just going to go and plug this in and we're just going to go work through the algebra. I'm not going to go and speak that out. But one key thing that we should go and see for, which is, you know, essential for going and solving that is noting that the expectation of ln theta is equal to zero and that theta does not interact with the other terms directly. So we can go and simplify this down to being the following, right? Which is beta C1 plus beta C2 times ln beta C2 minus ln one plus beta C2, right? I'm reading that from the bottom. That is our term for C1. And C2 is going to be one plus beta C2, right? And that's gonna be on our KT, right? This is because C2 is a term that's attached to KT in our initial guess. And our C3, right, which is going to be the term that's attached to our ln theta t, right, that's just going to be 1, right? And that's just followed based on logic and looking at this directly. So moving forward from that and solving that even further, you have to go and identify the coefficients from our guess. So as previously stated, C1 is just all the constant terms in that equation at the bottom of the slide and C3 is gonna be one by simple observation. What we're interested in is solving for C2. Note, for our guess to be accurate, we require C2 is equal to one plus beta C2. With a little bit of rearranging, we know that C2 is equal to one all over one minus beta. So what's important here and what's you know really novel here that is that this is the same as our deterministic case. This is the same coefficient estimate uh, than from our deterministic case. I'm just saying that a second time. Step six is that we use the coefficients to identify our policy functions from kt plus one. Again, some more algebra, but the policy function that we go and get, which is gk as a function of kt and theta t, right, is equal to beta theta t kt. So that's how uh, we're supposed to be going and saving at any specific point in time. Um, What's important here is to note that our consumer is not in control of these terms over here. Uh, whoops, I just forgot to go and say that, you know, for this consumption guy, uh, we just have, you know, the same sort of result just from our uh, identity for consumption over time. But even though theta is in here, uh, our consumer is not really in control of, of that. So in terms of, you know, actually providing a real interpretation is that these give you values these policy functions go and map out values regardless of you know what you're in control of so what this really goes and tells you is that we're our consumer is supposed to go and behave the exact same way right as in the deterministic case so there's no real radical change is to consumer behavior as a result of these shocks that are going and being done on them at least in this context of this cake eating problem. So um, this is a, you know, a video on a stochastic cake eating problem. I hope this video helps. Uh, take care. Let me know what you thought. If there's any mistakes, please share it to comment. Take care.